All right, Benchy's about to start. Speedboat race. Hashtag speedboat. Let's do this thing. All right, three minutes, eight seconds. That's pretty close to a new world record. Let's see how we did. I mean, sure, it doesn't have the best print quality, but we we're more going for speed here. Wait, this doesn't look right. I think something might have got mixed up in the slicer. There we go, that looks better. In today's episode, I'm going to be trying out some larger nozzle diameters on my Ender 3 S1. I also got this new heat break from Slice Engineering. The top and bottom portion are made out of copper, and the tube connecting the two is stainless steel or titanium. This hot end has a PTFE lining. PTFE has about 1 400th the thermal conductivity of copper. So if you think about this from a heat transfer perspective, this is basically doing nothing to melt the filament. All of the filaments being melted inside the nozzle on the heat break on the left. But on the heat break on the right, your filament is being melted in the nozzle, and it's also being melted in that tip of the heat break. So it's kind of giving you the same advantage that a volcano nozzle does. It's extending the length of the melting zone. Now if you want to upgrade your Ender 3 S1's hot end to being all metal, all you have to do is remove this heater block by taking off these two screws and undoing this scrub screw in the back. Then this whole heater block will come out. Then you can unscrew the old heater break. Then you're going to want to install your new bimetallic heat break. Then in the bottom you can either keep the old nozzle or upgrade it to a CHT nozzle. In my last video, someone in the comments informed me that I wasn't using enough boron nitride paste. I think if I just add a little bit more around the edges here, that should definitely help. Well, it looks like this heat break is a little bit long. It's not quite as long as that first one that I tried out, but it still sticks out about two millimeters. Thanks to the adjustment range that I've built into this fan duct, it works with both setups. If you want to check out this fan mount design, I've posted the files on Patreon. Okay, time to fire this thing up and do some extrusion rate testing. Oh, and if you're new here, my printer isn't broken. It's not screaming to life because I took out all the loud fans and replaced them with quiet fans. Check out my Silence of the Fans video if you want to see what that's all about. So if my theory is correct, you should be able to get a slight speed boost thanks to the bimetallic heat break. So you can see it's just barely starting to shoot to the side at 34 cubic millimeters per second. Wow, that's cool. It's like a corkscrew pattern. Right now at 52 cubic millimeters per second, the side shooting is starting to get bad enough where it might start affecting print quality. Time for 72 cubic millimeters per second. And we're finally getting our first skipped steps. Well, now I'm getting lots of skipped steps. So, I think we hit our limit. 80 cubic millimeters per second. Time for our last extrusion test of the day, the 1.8 millimeter nozzle. I don't think you have to worry about nozzle clogs as much with this thing. Alright, let's start off at 40 cubic millimeters per second because I'm pretty sure this thing can handle that. This is kind of odd looking. It kind of looks like the filament that goes into the printer. I wonder if I could just feed this back into the machine and have it printed again. Alright, time for 76. I don't think this is quite melted enough. So it handled 80 cubic millimeters per second no problem. Now before I start doing some test prints, I figured I needed to upgrade my part cooling solution. So I've installed this 120 millimeter blower fan. It dwarfs this little 40 by 20 millimeter one. So you can see it wraps around the nozzle here and it blasts it from a 180 degree arc. All right, so good news is the electrical portion works, but putting my hand under here and feeling the air coming off of it, it seems like it's blowing up too high. So I'm just going to remove a portion of this fan vent down at the bottom and basically just give it an overbite and that's going to direct more of the air downwards. First step is the purge line. Oh god, no, 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 no. I need to bring this CR touch probe down a little bit. With the new heat break that I installed, everything hangs down a little bit further. And Creality only allows you to adjust negative five millimeters, so any further adjustment and I'm going to have to physically move the CR touch. Then add a stack of four washers on top of it. It'd be nice if Creality had an adjustable height CR touch mount, but we don't have that. It's just one of those Ender 3 things. The thing about using a nozzle this large is your bed leveling doesn't actually matter that much. On a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, if you're off by 0.1 millimeters, that's a whopping 50% difference in your first layer thickness, but when you're using a 1.8 millimeter nozzle and printing 1 millimeter layers, being 0.1 millimeters off isn't that big of a deal. The part cooling fan is going to be blowing so much additional air past the nozzle, it might trigger the thermal runaway protection. To fix our heat loss problem, I got some of this rock wool. It can withstand really high temperatures and it's all fluffy so it prevents heat loss. And some of this Kapton tape. 
which is tape that's rated up to high enough temperatures that it won't melt when it's around the hot end. Now that I've added my insulation, I'm holding a steady 220 degrees Celsius. So that did the trick, I just needed something to keep the air off of the hot end. Alright, I've got one last test for this new fan duct, and that's going to be a truly massive print. This is going to be made with Tech Bears PLA. This thing looks awesome, so let's get it off the print bed. Oh, this thing is heavy. This weighs just under a kilogram. I used almost this entire spool of filament. I really like the look of these really large nozzle prints. The print head is moving so slow that you have no ghosting or ringing or any other type of extrusion and motion artifacts. So it looks like a perfect print. If you look at the bottom, it kind of reminds me of black licorice. It looks tasty, doesn't it? Now if we compare these side by side, you can see this one is much stronger. Just look at it. If we look at the extrusion test results, we see some pretty interesting stuff. Regardless of the nozzle size, all of the CHT nozzles take a knee around the 30 cubic millimeters per second mark. After this point, the flow rate drops off, which indicates that the extrusion back pressure is starting to increase. I think it's really interesting that all three nozzles start to fall off in the exact same way. If you think about it, they all have the same inlet geometry, so the rate at which they transfer heat into the filament should be pretty much the same across the board. I think after the 30 cubic millimeters per second mark, none of the nozzles can keep up with melting all of the filament, and back pressure starts to build up because of it. I think that there's an unmelted core inside of the hot end that extends further down the throat of the nozzle as you increase volumetric flow rate. At some point, it plugs the opening of the nozzle outlet, and once that outlet is plugged, the flow is choked and you can't extrude any faster. You can get around this by bumping up the hot end temperature, or you can try to push through it with brute force, but once you get to this point, you're pretty much at the limit of your 3D printer. The 0.4mm nozzle keeps extruding above 36 cubic millimeters per second, but due to excessive side shooting, I would never use it at those speeds. If it started doing this while you weren't around to stop the printer, you might end up with plastic all over the heater block, which would make a huge mess. I thought the bimetallic heat break would make a big difference in the extrusion performance, but realistically, it only delayed the onset of the side shooting by 2 to 4 cubic millimeters per second. The hot end actually performed slightly worse with the bimetallic heat break at my last three data points, where it was extruding slightly less plastic than what I was getting with the titanium heat break. The 1 millimeter CHT nozzle worked well up to 56 cubic millimeters per second. After that, the side shooting could cause issues with failed prints. The 1.8 millimeter CHT nozzle just kept going up to 80 cubic millimeters per second. It didn't show any significant sign of side shooting or skip steps. If you listen closely, you can hear the internal solid core snap when I pull apart the extrusion. I think that's what's causing the beaded appearance on the clothes hanger print. Another way to think about it is imagine you're laying rope down on the sidewalk. You have to lay down one foot of rope for every one foot that you walk, otherwise it's going to get weird. Let's say you're feeding out two feet of rope for every one foot that you're walking, well then you'll end up with a squiggly pattern on the ground where that rope is coiling up and trying to compensate for the fact that you're not moving forward fast enough. The other situation is imagine you're only feeding out half a foot of rope for every foot that you're walking. Then you're going to end up with tension in the line and unless it's a stretchy rope it's going to stop you from moving forward. So in summary, if you're going to get a CHT nozzle, I think the best choice is a 0.4 millimeter diameter version. You can play around with high speed printing at 15 to 30 cubic millimeters per second, but when you need to print something out in high detail, you can always revert to your normal settings and still get amazing print quality and detail on the same setup. Larger nozzle sizes like the 1mm and 1.8mm CHT nozzles will give you a slight boost in print speed, but in my opinion they're most useful for artistic effects and for thick walled printing. For me, there's a soft limit at 30 cubic millimeters per second for all of these nozzles. I don't really care for the beaded look or the compromised mechanical strength that shows up once you start pushing over 40 cubic millimeters per second. I plan on getting around this limitation by switching to a hot end with an extended melt zone, like the Fetus Rapido or the Mosquito Magnum. But if you're just using a standard sized heater block, a 0.4 CHT nozzle should serve you very well. I'll leave links in the description to all the products and tools I used in this episode, and remember to subscribe if you want to see more 3D printer content, mods, and reviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. A solid core extrusion could have some interesting applications, especially in the context of composite materials. If you had a solid core of, say, a few strands of copper wire or carbon fibers embedded into the center of your filament, 
you can impart some pretty interesting characteristics into your print, like high tensile strength or high thermal or electrical conductivity. I think a key concept in implementing these types of composites is to understand the relationship between how fast you're feeding the filament into the extruder and how fast you're moving the extruder along the surface of your part. So this is a really interesting, even a patentable idea, but when I come up with an idea like this, I'd rather just throw it out there in a YouTube video and make a blog post about it, because if I get it out there as prior art, then no one can patent it and everyone can have access to the idea.